time. Whoa. 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 Wildlife can be found just about anywhere that there are adequate resources available to sustain viable populations, especially in locations such as Florida that are warm pretty much year-round. Some species can do quite well right alongside human development, which is why I end up stalking around hotel parking lots at 2am on the hunt for reptiles and amphibians. Look at that. That is a Cuban tree frog invasive species of amphibian here in Central Florida. Now, there is lots of color variation and pattern variation among the different tree frogs that live in Florida, and upon first glance, I thought this was a Cope's gray tree frog, which is a native species that we want to see around here. Um, but this is a pretty large tree frog. It's probably two inches, I would say, and this there was a larger one a little higher up on the wall. And also, he's lacking these distinct uh, white splotches that should be below his eyes if he was, in fact, a native Cope's gray tree frog. Now, these Cuban tree frogs came from Cuba, of course, and the first ones likely came across on shipments, but the weather conditions here were very similar to the weather conditions in Florida, I mean in Cuba, and so they were able to establish Quite a successful breeding population here in Florida. And as a result of Florida's climate being very similar to Cuba's climate, where these are native to, these guys were able to establish a very successful breeding population here in Florida. Now, these pose a couple different threats to the ecosystem, so Cuban tree frogs are larger than any of the native species that you have in Florida. The sprinklers just came on. So Cuban tree frogs are larger than those native tree frog species you have here in Florida, which means that these actually eat and outcompete native tree frogs, and these will also eat things like Mediterranean house geckos, and I've seen several of those around here. Now, as you can see by their huge eyes, these guys are very visual hunters, they're ambush hunters, so what they'll do is they'll kind of curl up in a corner of the wall where they don't think anything can see them, and when a Mediterranean gecko or a smaller tree frog goes by, bam, they jump out, they grab it, and they just swallow it whole. So this is an example of an invasive species that's very low profile. It's a very small animal, and you wouldn't think that they can do very much damage, but because Florida amphibians are already such a vulnerable population due to things like urban expansion and water pollution, these are a serious problem here in Florida. Now one really cool thing about Cuban tree frogs, although they are invasive, look at those, those toe pads are extremely sticky. Now those are all like mini suction cups. And I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times already, but I'll say it again, these guys are incredible at climbing because of those suction cup-like fingers. He really is totally gripping my finger right now. And even though he's invasive, he's pretty darn cute. So those suction cups let these guys be on completely vertical or even upside down surfaces. And they're also aided by the, uh, the kind of goo that these guys produce. Now I, I would like to put them back. It is an invasive species, so really I should kill it. I just don't like killing animals that I interact with. This is a lifer for me. This is the first time I've ever seen a Cuban tree frog. But if I do see others and get my hands on them, I will probably end up culling them from the population just because they don't belong here in the first place. Well, everyone, I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode and learned something new about the Cuban tree frog. If you want to follow my daily adventures, please feel free to check out my social media pages using the links in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch all of my new wildlife videos. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.